know you're hungry. I know you're upset. I'm Joe Riccio and welcome to Food Coma My 70s Kitchen brought to you from My 70s Kitchen. Uh, today, we're gonna play around with an Instant Pot which really has the most unfortunate name uh, for a really useful kitchen tool. It basically, Instant Pot essentially sounds like QVC to the max, um, even though it's actually really fun and it's quite useful. Uh, I was given this, I did not actively seek this out myself, and I have to say I've used it several times and I actually, I really, really like cooking with it. It basically is just doing what you're doing on the range generally, uh, just cutting down on time uh, significantly. So, yeah, we figured we'd do some short ribs today, um, some Asian seasonings, kind of a Vietnamese influenced, because why wouldn't we do that? Obviously, it's not a big deal to braise short ribs if you're gonna do it, if it takes three or four hours. Usually, it's pretty much just leave it and let it do its thing. Um, I figured because it was sandwiches, I wanted to kind of get this done quicker, and it's just as delicious, so why not? We have these beautiful, meaty short ribs here, and we're gonna put some of our bougie uh, peanut oil in to get our ribs browning, it's on saute mode. So this thing has a few different modes. I pretty much only use saute and pressure cook. Uh, if you are, on the other hand, a Instant Pot veteran, you'll probably notice things that I'm doing wrong and that's fine too. So we're gonna braise the ribs and then we're gonna basically cook them uh, in a braising liquid of beef stock with lemongrass, a little star anise, cinnamon, ginger garlic lemongrass powder, some palm sugar, uh, a bunch of other goodies in there, but the first thing we gotta do is get these guys uh, browned up in here. Yep, okay. This thing heats up pretty quickly, which I like. It's also nice because the Instant Pot is much more reliable than the usual violently unreliable burner that we have going. So I'm fairly confident, I wanna knock on wood, that uh, this thing is gonna do what it says, unlike the other burner, which does what it feels like. There are influences, there are definitely elements of a banh mi, but I'm not gonna call it a banh mi because it's not a banh mi. Uh, there's no, we're not using any pickled carrots or daikon. Uh, I figure we're gonna do the short ribs, get those nice and brazy. I do have the appropriate uh, banh mi uh, rolls, a nice crusty roll, we're gonna heat those up in the oven. I pickled some red Fresno chili, it's gonna make a little lime uh, and lemongrass. Uh, mayo with some Kewpie mayo. So it's kind of like a steak sandwich or a beef sandwich essentially, it is not a banh mi. There's basically a lot, it's a bastardized version of all kinds of things in a bun, which goes with the motif here, so. And like I said, I'm not too hardcore about how much I brown my ribs, I think. But don't be afraid of that nice, what's forming on the bottom of the pan. I gotta say, I like this this thing. It It's kind of an all-in-one in which, I mean, I haven't owned a microwave oven for, even when I did have access to one, it wasn't mine. I haven't owned my own microwave oven since 2004, five, I think. I just kind of like live without it. It doesn't really bother me. Uh, occasionally, when I wanna make some fucking popcorn, and popcorn, popcorn? Is it popcorn or pop, I say popcorn. Well, I wanna make popcorn and I don't wanna make a fucking mess with making it manually, even though it is delicious to do it that way. That's the only time when I wanna make some Redenbacher kettle corn and just, you know, watch some MLB highlights like you do. Uh, it's more of a process. And then I end up making too much popcorn and it ends up everywhere in the sink. And I never know when it's actually done. I take the lid off too early and the popcorn starts flying everywhere. So that is the one thing I like a microwave for. Uh, in terms of your sort of all-in-one cooking device, but I've never felt the need for one. This, on the other hand, you don't feel like you're using some kind of gimmicky bullshit, which is nice. Even though it is called an Instant Pot, things don't actually happen in an instant with this freaking thing. All right, so we're gonna take these short ribs out. I'm gonna toss some onions in there. I'm gonna hit it with a little more oil just to make sure things don't b b b b burn. So this is just a little red onion. Yeah, they're actually, I got them at Rosemont. They were like local red onions. They had, they had like a stalk and everything. They look kind of like, they have more of a shallot feel to them. So anything you can scrape up while these guys are in here, do it. If not, more will get loosened as we go. Okay, now what we're gonna do is sort of assemble a bit of a spice paste, if you will, in here, which is a, 
going to aid in the braising process. Uh, I'm going to start with some palm sugar. This is actually just a palm sugar paste. I prefer this uh, to using white sugar. This is a paste I made of garlic, ginger, and lemongrass, which lemongrass with the texture of it is nice for you. The finer you can grind it, the better. You know, kind of let those develop. You know, that's going to start melting, the palm sugar. Keep things moving. You don't want to burn it. This thing actually gets fairly hot. Not insanely hot, but we can get some of this beef goodness up off the pot. That's always a good thing. Look at that. There we go. I, uh, I took a, a homemade beef stock and then in turn simmered that with lemongrass, star anise, and cinnamon, and black pepper just to kind of boost the flavor up of that uh, and use it as the base for our braise here. Again, a lot of, you know, Chinese Vietnamese flavors going on in there. Uh, the sugar is nice and melted now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the ribs back in. I'm going to coat them with the sugar a little bit just to kind of, you know, make it a little caramel, caramel ribs here. So that's all those guys back in like so. All right. We're going to go with our, our stock here. So this is our flavored beef stock. Now a couple little fun surprises. Okay, you guys get in there. You want to always use the bone in short ribs for this, by the way, I think that's better. We're going to do a little bit of a MSG. Speaking of umami, this is a compound butter that I actually made. I made some ramen uh, a few nights ago. Uh, and this is basically uh, powdered, took uh, dried shiitake mushrooms, powdered them. Uh, and cook them in butter and let it come back together with some seaweed powder. We're just going to put this in here and just let it melt into all this. Having a little umami bomb dropped into that pot. And, you know, a little bit of Malden just because we don't really need that. I think it'll be plenty salty because uh, we're also going to add uh, fish sauce here. So this is the Red Boat. This is a Vietnamese brand of fish sauce. Some fresh pepper. I have a blend in here of white and black pepper that I like. Okay. Wow. See, this brazen liquid already looks like ramen broth. Now comes the fun part. What we're going to do, we're going to put our lid onto our instant pot here. And it's going to make a fun little noise when you've done it right or when you've done it incorrectly like I like to do it. Look at that. Da, 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 da. All right. So we're going to do this on high pressure for 45 minutes. Uh, what I always fuck up here is the, it has to be on the seal. This, this thing basically, if it's on vent and then you let it do this, all you do is come back 10 minutes later and there's just steam billowing out of it and nothing's getting pressure cooked. So make sure that's closed. The Instant Pot is on. Uh, it is going to come to temperature now and basically it's going to cook for 45 minutes, we're going to let the pressure release naturally. Uh, during that time, we're going to make some of the condiments and we'll be back to check on our beef. Uh, it's time to make some mayo. Not making mayo, actually, we're using as a base the time-honored tradition of, of Kewpie, which is Japanese mayonnaise, which we use on the show pretty much all the time. Um, it's the one I like to use. Everybody kind of has their thing, whether it's like Dukes or Sir Kensington or... I don't know, kind of basic if, if Hellman's like your actual thing. How much, Hellman's is like, you know, when you, if you just need some mayo and whatever somebody has on hand. But if you get to choose, uh, I like QP uh, for most things. But I have honestly not had Dukes. And I'm sure a lot of people who love Dukes would tell me to go fuck myself because I say that QP is the best. So uh, if that's the case, feel free to mail us a case of Dukes mayo. Uh, if you get, get in touch with us through our Patreon, uh, which you should do anyway, and we will give you an address you can send the Duke's Mayo to, and maybe you'll even get a gift certificate to Dunson Tapping Table. I don't even know. we trade that, wouldn't we? Yes. we trade it. You know what? We all have a price here in our 70s kitchen. Okay, so first off, it's worth saying, this blender scares the shit out of me. Uh, I got it on Amazon. It doesn't really have, it's not a recognized <laughs> brand. I think it's clearly trying to be something that might not be. Uh, it has, I think, the same engine that, like a, a small a prop engine jet, or a Cessna, it's not a jet, I guess, whatever it is. A plane. <laughs> it's got the same engine that would, would, would go for, uh, would, would power an aircraft. 
Uh, at some point, I know something terrible is going to happen with this, but for now, it's got the power that we don't need, but we're going to use it anyway because my other thing is either awkward or too small. Uh, Kewpie mayonnaise with some Malden sea salt on it, as we just discussed. What we're doing, we're just making a, uh, a delightful little spread for our short rib sandwiches. This is uh, some lime juice with some lemongrass puree. So we're just gonna zip that up. Thought about putting cilantro in this as well, but we're actually gonna do the cilantro as a garnish for the thing. Is this gonna be bad? Okay. I thought for a second, I was like ready for anything to happen. One time I put a bolognese sauce in this that's a different recipe than normal. And it's still all over the, uh, the screen of the kitchen window. Okay, I think that's sufficient, don't you? Yeah, it looks like mayo that's been blended with lime juice and lemongrass, and it smells like it too. Citrusy mayo uh, to go with our spicy, aromatic, rich beef short rib. Yeah, yeah. Uh, time has elapsed, the uh, 45 minutes plus to let it actually uh, decompress naturally for uh, 15 minutes as well, depressurize. Uh, so about to kind of check on the short ribs here. What we're gonna do now, there's the exit music. Oh yeah. Look at that. And then I'm gonna reduce this, or I'm gonna start the sauce on a little bit of a saute. Oh yeah, that's got the bone. The bone's gonna slide out. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Bone slid out already. Got that. So yeah, 45 minutes. And that's what happens to this. Oh, it's fatty, meaty glory. Ow. Perfectly tender, perfectly delicious. Uh, I'm gonna let that reduce down anyway uh, to, for the leftover ribs, but right now, let's put the sandwich together. All right, so we have some, uh, some pre-shredded uh, beef short rib here. The rest of it's just hanging out in there, kind of reducing a little bit. What we're gonna do, we got our crusty banh mi roll. I'm gonna uh, slather it with a little bit of our mayo, our citrus cupy mayo. Short rib going in. I like the nice fatty bits. Pickled Fresno chilies. Pickled in vinegar, salt, sugar, garlic. Finish it with a little bit of cilantro. As the sandwich comes together, so we have our the, the braised meat, crunchy roll, creamy mayo, spicy pe uh, spicy peppers, and a little uh, cilantro on top. Should I just take a bite of this thing now? Is that what I'm doing? This is not a bon mi, by the way. It's on bon mi bread, but it's not a bon mi. Close you want. I mean, it's one of those things like the sum of its parts. Sum of its parts, like it's not gonna suck. You can take this whole thing and mash it up into a bowl and it'll still be delicious. But yeah, that's an awesome sandwich. Those pickles, the pickle chilies are, have some really nice heat to them, but with all that richness going on there, mm, that's delicious. So there you have it. You got plenty of uh, short rib left over to make plenty of sandwiches. Uh, you can put it with your eggs, have it with whatever you want, the mayo, all this stuff. It's good to just have in the fridge prep for whenever you need it. Makes me happy, all of it. Nothing wrong with having some citrusy QB mayo around as well. So there it is, your uh, Not Bon Me uh, braised short rib sandwich with pickled chili and cilantro. Uh, I'm Joe Riccio, this is Food Coma, my 70s kitchen. If you like what you saw today and want us to keep the episodes coming, please check out our Patreon uh, at patreon.com forward slash Food Coma Podcast. There are three tiers of membership, the most expensive being $10. They're all right named after Roman emperors. They all have various perks. But most importantly, I help support production here. Um, it certainly isn't gonna, I'm not upgrading the kitchen, but everything else, you know, costs money. So uh, yeah, if you'd like to support us, uh, be part of the show, you know, call it your own. Uh, go over to patreon.com, boot up a podcast and join up today.